Well, I think the biggest failure of the published reviewers of Darwin's Doubt was the failure of those reviewers to engage, let alone refute, the main argument of the book. The, the main argument of Darwin's Doubt is that the Cambrian explosion was not just an explosion of new animal form in the history of life. It was necessarily an explosion of information, of genetic information and higher forms of information that we now call epigenetic or ontogenetic information. To build an animal requires a lot of instructions, a lot of information. And the origin of that information is the central unsolved problem of modern evolutionary theory. The reviewers of the book were conspicuous in their refusal to engage that argument, to even describe that argument, let alone refute it. There was one reviewer, uh, Professor Marshall of Berkeley, who did attempt to engage the argument of the book and who did attempt to refute it. I don't think he did, but he at least addressed the main argument of the book. But the other main reviewers of the book, Nicholas Matsky, who wrote at Panda's Thumb, uh, Gareth Cook, who wrote at The New Yorker, uh, John Farrell, who wrote at the National Review, and others, simply refused to even describe the main argument of the book, uh, let alone uh, did they refute it. And if, if you don't talk about the argument that a book makes, uh, you can't claim to have refuted the book.